Welcome to episode 64 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. Here we are. We've all been through a weird Thanksgiving. It was a weird one for my family. We had to modify most of the fun out of our plans. But I'm good with that because we're making an investment now in our future fun. Thanksgiving is always my favorite day of the year. It's when I spend days with my grown children doing what we all love. We each contribute a few dishes to the gathering, and much of it is cooked and baked in my kitchen. We serve as sous chefs for each other. It's a day full of laughs and excellent food and drinks, followed up with a big slumber party. So it ends up being days of fun. It's such a wonderful way to launch ourselves into the holiday season. This year was quite different. We can't know if any of us have the virus because we don't have the luxury of easy testing and then the full quarantining that is required after the test is done. So this puts us all at risk. One of the most damaging things that is a product of this pandemic is having to be suspicious of the people you love most in this world. When your personal safety is rooted in what other people have chosen to do and what every person that they have come into contact with has chosen to do, it tends to leave one feeling a bit paranoid. I really hate that feeling. But all of this matters. With all the awful things that have happened this year, one of the most exciting is also happening. My oldest son and daughter-in-law are expecting their first child a couple months from now. This ramps up even further the need to be safe. We need to keep everyone safe. Since there's nothing I have ever wanted more than being a grandmother, I need to keep safe so I can experience all the joy this miracle holds possible. Every family has people who they need to keep safe, people who may be in more danger if they caught the virus. But now we find out that many young people who seemingly get through the virus without great difficulty are having lasting health effects. And since this is all new, we have no idea how long the after effects will last. It's all pretty terrifying. The virus is a horrid way to have illustrated for us how we are all connected. The super spreader events have shown how a group can gather without knowing that someone in their midst has the virus and then take that virus out to people each and every one of them are connected to. It's not unusual for the people who die of the virus to be connected to super spreader events, even though they did not attend the event. We are all connected for good and for ill. So everyone needs to modify their traditions to take this into account. There is no telling at this point what the rest of the holiday season will be like. We all need to make the mental and emotional adjustments so we can cope with whatever our situation is going forward. We'll have to make sacrifices now so that we may resume our most cherished holiday traditions in the future. We are now called upon to feel anchored and full of joy without the traditions that supplied that in the past. We must find new ways to make connections when we can't be together. But we are strong that way. We know that it will only serve to strengthen our love of each other and will make a future return to normalcy even more glorious. <laughs> Thank you.
When we came to this school, we signed up to run an obstacle course. We came here to do the hard work. We can't complain when we have obstacles thrown in front of us. That is what we are here to master. We are here to master obstacles. We are here to figure out the way forward while maintaining our best attributes and to grow into wiser and stronger people. We are also here to care for our loved ones as much as we care for ourselves. In the best of all possible outcomes, we are here to care about people we don't even know. We are here to want the best for everyone, whether we understand our connection to them or not. We are interconnected because the outcome for others will ripple out to affect us as well. Our best case scenario is that everyone is healthy, happy, and living a life full of meaning. Our best case scenario is that everyone has the opportunity to contribute what they came here to contribute. Our best case scenario is that we live in a lively, bustling community that affords everyone the ability to make a good living and to care for their families. Our best case scenario is that we feel solid and strong in the life choices we are making and trust that others are making the choices that make sense for their evolution. All of those desires are also interconnected. The last nine months have shown us that. But the last nine months have also given us the opportunity to use these challenges to build up our own personal tool chest needed for survival. In the rebirth, there will be many flashpoints. We are in a huge one right now. Every flashpoint is meaningful and meant to grow us to a place where we will be ready and capable of tackling whatever comes up next. Every event in your past that you thought damaged you actually grew and empowered you. This is no different. The choices you have made during this flashpoint moved you either forward, backward, or down a side path. There are lessons to be learned and wisdom to be gained in all three places. For you to move to higher levels, you need to become completely accepting of yourself. This pandemic has stripped us of the distractions we used to not be alone, to not examine our thoughts, to not recognize our needs. The silver lining here is that you are almost forced to figure yourself out. What comes up for you when you're sitting in a room alone is exactly what you need to address and embrace so you can move forward. That makes it a gift. When I suggest you be accepting of yourself, it is not offered as an excuse to ignore the parts of you that cause pain for yourself and others. It is to accept that this is where you are right now. It is to accept that there are parts of you that you need to heal. That is your job. You need to heal yourself. It is essential that you accept that this is part of the human process. No one has it all figured out. No one is doing it all right. No one is without work that they still need to do to be more fully realized and in turn move to higher levels. But loving and accepting yourself while in the state of being a work in progress is vital. It is necessary. You can't pull yourself up if you are always beating yourself down. We are not here to live mundane lives. We are here to unearth magic and release it into the world. 
We are not here to live a life that is full of self-incrimination and defensiveness. We are here to acknowledge and understand the spark of the divine is in us and share that with the world. That spark that we have to share can be best realized if we also embrace the fact that we have some rough edges that need sanding. We need to understand that life is going to sand us down so that we may shine more fully. But don't let your focus be on the sandpaper. Let it be on the increased brilliance that is being revealed by the sandpaper. The sandpaper may be through relationships with others or through the many complications and obstacles that the current state of our world offers up daily. In this reset, we are all being shown the value of our connections and the nourishment that they provide. We are given the opportunity to see better who we are and who those around us are. Flashpoints have the ability to wash away artifice and reveal the true nature of everyone. Just as power reveals a person's true nature, the lack of control over our circumstances is doing the same for us. It's not all pretty. We are seeing all around us how selfish and cruel some people can be. That is the true nature of a person who is still at the low levels of spiritual awareness. They are revealing who they are at this point in their development. But some of it is absolutely beautiful. We are seeing all around us how selfless and loving many people can be. This is the true nature of a person who is at a higher level of spiritual awareness. This confluence of disasters has revealed who they are at this point in their development. This school will always have a mix of all the levels of spiritual awareness. We will never all be on the same page or in the same grade. How we deal with the reality of this fact reveals where we are in our progression. Even though I know this to be the way it's meant to be, I find myself frustrated and angry with those who can't seem to find it in themselves to care about the well-being of others. I find myself furious that those who care have to pay the price for those who do not. So much of life is not fair. That fact has aggravated me all my life. But this is where the spiritual rubber meets the road. This is where we have to somehow dig deeper and find a way to work with and find love and compassion for those who are our opposition. That is so much easier to say than to do. The frustration lies in knowing that there is no clear path to accelerate the growth of another person's spiritual awareness level. There are no magic words or secret formulas that will flip them. Every soul has to work through their lessons and their levels at the pace that is possible for them. Only they have the power to set that pace. One change I'm noticing is that I no longer feel any sort of emotion when I hear or read ugly or cruel declarations in the world at large. I used to be filled with anger when I would encounter thoughts and opinions that were super dark. They used to really upset me. Now I know to expect this from a segment of the population. It is simply a way 
for each person to state, for the record, where they are in their own personal development. It's an indication of the amount of darkness that still consumes them. It used to make me mad, but now makes me sad to understand what it must be like to feel as they do. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. There are so many who have become unmoored from the truth and are full of fear and the anger that baseline emotion brings up. That is a very dark and dangerous place to be. Feeling sad that they are wrapped up in so much darkness is where I am right now. That may not be much, but it is what I am capable of at this point in my development. And that's all we really have control over, our own development. Love and compassion for ourselves and others. No one said that was an easy task. In fact, it may be the roughest road of all. Thanks for listening to Rebirth Revolution. It's good to know there are people all over the globe who are seekers. You are seen and appreciated. Let me know if there's any topic that would help you get through these tough times. Until next week, give more attention to those who are doing what is right. Give less attention to those who seek to spread more darkness. Do some full tilt decorating, even if no one else will see it. And wear your mask. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet, not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay strong and safe and in the light.